gentlemen, thank, first of all, congratulations on the movie. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, before we get started, uh, the only reason Collider gets to be at the Toronto International Film Festival is because of our great sponsors. So I want to give a huge thank you to Nordstrom Canada for being a great sponsor and partnering up with us uh, to allow us to cover movies. Um, and now let's jump into why I get to talk to you guys today. Um, so first I want to say uh, congratulations. Um, you guys uh, really, uh, I learned a lot about what happened at that time. I felt like I was there watching these, uh, this whole event un un you know, unfold. Um, talk a little bit about, this is obviously based on what really happened. Talk a little bit about trying to make a movie trying to tell a story based on real events, but also being for, you're telling it, making a movie. So balancing that line of fact and fiction and, you know, telling the story. Sure. So, you know, contrary to what people think is that uh, when you make a movie based on a true story, in a way you are, there's less imagination, so to speak. It's exactly the opposite, which means you have to find all, the, all your imagination, all your inspiration in order to be able to both be true to the events and making a movie, it has to follow a structure of a movie and be you know, dramatic and interesting, exciting, thrilling, and all those aspects within the confinement of a true story. So I think there's a lot of responsibility uh, involved in that. You have to you know, study, learn, investigate your subject matter, which we did for uh, almost four years, you know, on and off, intense two years before we've written the script and you really got to master your facts otherwise you know you're you're telling a, a, an untrue story so that's number 1 and then how do you do that with dramatic uh creating a dramatic structure uh is just more um challenging completely i just realized um 99% of the people watching this interview will not have seen the movie yet so if you don't mind doing the generic thing could you sort of talk about what the film is about okay so the film is about the um, the the journey that the, um, that Igal Amir um, went till he shot Itzhak Rabin, and so the so it's follow his events that happened, and show the whole movie is from his perspective, from his eyes. So it, most of the time you see what he thinks and what he sees, what pushed him to do this this action, what influenced him, what polluted him, what what he saw, what he fe what he felt. What triggered him to to do this action, this awful action? Completely. Uh, one of the things I, I have to ask. So you obviously you, you want to act in as many projects as you can, and you get you find out you go. Basically, it's a great role for you, but you're also playing the, a person who did such a heinous act. You know. So talk a little bit about that mentality of this is such a great role, but oh my God, this is such a terrible person. It is, it's true. It's, he's a terrible uh, person, but as an actor, I cannot judge him. So, few facts. Both, first of all, we both Yemenite. We both raised in the same community. Um, so I raised under the values of the Torah. Also, I know that I, we also like him, I raised in a religious, warm Yemenite family and I have the backgrounds, I know, I know the prayers, the Yemenite kind of melodies prayers, I know that I had the body language, I, so I used to be religious as well as I, when I was a kid. And as you can see, I'm not keeping that, that way um, because, because I'm not, it's not my cup of tea and <laughs> you know. Um, so it was very easy for me to to at the beginning just to um, to sink in this and to wear this character um, in terms of emotion and, and ideologies I needed to almost turn my skin so I because I'm I'm not think I I needed to um, adjust the way that I the way that I think in order to think as like him so it was pretty easy at the beginning because I'm because I'm coming from the same background but um, in terms of the emotions that I need to 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 uh, to feel in order to um, to be faithful to the story and to be faithful for the for the character it was extremely hard at the beginning uh, but Yaron gave me the opportunity to do the method acting and 
and I was I completely trust him on this on this journey. No, so, no, you did a great job. Um, one of the things that I yeah, one of the things I took away from the uh, from the film is that it it feels to me like a lot of people this whole thing had been boiling up and it seems like a lot of people maybe knew that this could happen um what what was like some of the stuff that maybe you learned while researching this that really surprised you yeah so what was uh, surprising again by I, I knew i mean i lived through that period i was part of that period i was part of the pro peace movement at the time but we were not aware of a couple of things one of them is like how uh, strong and why the opposition was and the hate, the level of hate, the politics of hate that was going on, you know, sort of labeling uh, Itzhak Rabin as a traitor and creating him as a demon, a demon. And eventually uh, all that led to, you know, delegitimize him and making him a person that by, sh you know, shooting him, killing him, taking him out, is actually a, a heroic uh, act to do. So there was a whole pressure around that that was boiling uh, for maybe half of the people. Yeah, it's and, and that's it's the shocking part. And we saw it. It was in front of our eyes. We also have responsibility for not protecting him. Not that that's you know the main issue here at all, but there should have been more protection for Rabin because of this noises of violence that were drumming. Completely. Um, no matter what movie you're making, there's never enough time and there's never enough money. So before the, you start filming, for both of you, what were you really nervous to be able to accomplish with the limitations in front of you? And, and I guess that also applies for you. No, uh, yeah, for me, I mean, as you know, as, as a director, as a writer, I mean, co-writer, as a producer also, for me, you know, financing a movie of that sort was very, very difficult regardless because, you know, the story, the subject matter is very controversial in Israel. Uh, some of the criticism are towards people who today run the government and are important uh, personalities in Israeli society. And when you do that, it, it's difficult. So, for example, we didn't get film funds uh, support in Israel, public film funds, which usually is very difficult, if almost impossible, to make a movie without them. So we managed to overcome that by, you know, there were certain individuals that, you know, came to the rescue and helped us make this movie. So that was like on a very basic level. And then when you go through, you know, your research, meeting people, there's certain uh, resentments that you have to overcome, you know, just by the fact that you're researching uh, people that are criticizing the movie. So that was very difficult. But in terms of accomplishing, for me, it was more on a level of uh, artistic level, meaning that the movie will, will shake you when you watch it and afterwards. Because what happens is, it, you know, the, the actual events took place 24 years ago. And for us, it's like yesterday. It's actually today. It's, we're talking about now. You know, attacking democracy is now. It's relevant this moment. Shooting a prime minister or shooting a president in the U.S., that's the equivalent, is an attack on democracy, right? It's like you choose a government and then somebody's trying to uh, attack and kill democracy. So, and we see it right now as we speak in many, many places around the world. So for me, the important part was that when you have a memory of something, you know, slowly but surely, it dissipates and becomes some kind of a, just a word, a concept, as opposed to the strong emotions that are associated with it, the, the power of the trauma. So I want to, to, us to relive the trauma as, as a community, be able to look at the trauma in the eyes and maybe go back there and figure out, you know, what happened, why it happened, what can we learn out of this experience and move forward, at, in, you know, to a better future. So that was for me the major challenge. So that the movie would not be like, okay, I watched it, somebody died, oh, you know, it's very sad, but it's yet another movie about somebody who did certain things and died. I wanted to be, you know, that experience, and to create that was the whole journey of, you know, six years of work. Yeah, um, all that research and everything you did really shows on the screen. I'll say it, it's, it's one of the best things I've seen this year at Thank TIFF. you so I, I much. Really, I, th I think you guys did a tremendous job with it. Um, but talk about the challenges. Yeah, the challenge for me was to be to to be faithful for the for this specific character, even though I hate what he did, even though I'm not, I'm not. I don't think the same as him, of course, but for me, this was to to be able to, um, and it was surprising for me also to 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 um, 
to go through this journey and to feel and see the depth that I'm going to that I'm that I'm finding in myself in in terms of emotions and so I really wanted to and I really wanted to to be and think as him as hard as as it can be but I think that I'm 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 okay with the with the result and I I had Yaron Yaron Silverman which which I trust I trusted the whole through the whole journey and that was the main challenge for me sure mm-hmm. so allow me just to say something about you that because he can't say it about himself but when I met him you know during the audition the period at the beginning I met a guy who was uh, the closest to a hippie Israeli hippie you know it's like going to a parties all sort of uh, cacao thing uh, parties uh, Peruvian costumes and he was really out there and during the process he became a religious like an Orthodox Jew keeping all the traditions to a level where in Judaism you're not allowed to touch unless it's your wife you cannot touch a woman a woman cannot touch a man a man cannot touch a woman unless it's your wife so there's through marriage you have to marry in order to do this okay and he became religious and suddenly from one day to another he doesn't you know shake the hands of the producers no you know production managers there's just nothing he's like looking at them they you know want to shake your hand or say good morning which you know Israelis are very touch you know sure very, phys- very physical people and so they, they want no it's like you don't touch me. and suddenly he became religious for us and it allowed him to also you know get into the part and And become the assassin sure Did yeah you? I went I just want to yeah. add to this I went to to the synagogue three times a day put Philin and everything and I kept Shabbat and I love to to do things on Shabbat and so for almost five months I think I was completely religious and and that's the man who pushed me to do this and and to to be religious I didn't think that it Ever in my life I will wear a tzitzit or a kippah or, or wear this kind of a, a character. And I, I have to ask you, what is it, when you do something full throttle like that, I've spoken to actors that have done some stuff like that and they talk about the decompression process. That it's, you know, you wrap on the film and then it's the next day. And then it's just mentally, who are you again? It's, it's about finding yourself after this experience. endeavor so talk a little bit about what happened after you wrapped okay so I have a story about it because in the rap party you're on so through the whole journey through the whole rehearsals and shooting you're on just divided me and he he kept me and he we were thought we were thinking as eagle thought okay and he didn't he didn't express his own ideas or his own ideology about the whole thing he was just like we went through We were directly to this uh, till the end, but at the begin and then in the rap party he said what he think about this this a- this action and about what he did and I was like thinking, okay, it's weird it's weird to me what how come that okay, something changed. I adjust myself so much till I was I thought that this is the right thing to do so the At that moment to, at, to murder yeah sure. he was convinced murdering Robin is the right thing to do yeah. as an actor as a, as an as a actor, person knew that completely so, into the character and then I realized when he said that I realized okay I need help I need help with 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 taking this character off off of me yeah and I I, I went to a few therapists like energetic people Kind of a, a therapist and I went to Thailand just to for three for three weeks to recover and to just forget the whole thing I was like I I did it I'm I was I talk I, I told myself that I want to forget what happened I don't want to any any of his energy to exist in my in my body I have to ask you Did, were you nervous when you're sitting there in Thailand, in Thailand you're trying to decompress 
are you scared that he's going to call you and say, we need to do three days of additional <laughs> photography? <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, you're like, so there was one day, happen. there was one day, but that day was very simple for him. It was just like technical stuff, you know, writing some scripture, sure, stuff, okay. taking it, putting the gun out of his pants, Got it, okay. you know, things of that nature. But, but, but you no, know what no, I mean, I, though. I, yeah, I knew I couldn't bring him back. You can't bring that back. What happened with this guy? He became the assassin in such a way that, as I said, we, we had a deal. The contract was from before the shoot, months before the shoot, until the rap party. The deal was that I'm with him 100%, which means I will never talk about the assassination mm -hmm. as a bad thing. Like me and him, I'm like pushing him to do it and I'm helping him becoming stronger in faith that yeah. one has to do it only to help him do his job the best way he could, which is as an actor is to become the, the, the assassin, right? To get, become Igal Amir. That was my whole job. So he never heard my opinion <laughs> about the subject to a matter where at some point he thought maybe I'm making this movie to show that it was good. <laughs> and he even, he even pushed as uh, like people. As, uh, he, yeah, I wouldn't he, let anybody, anyone, anybody, crew. Anyone. And in Israel, you know, there's such a resentment towards the murderer that everybody wanted to say something. I told the entire crew, director of photography, production designer, they just know what he should not know that there's a world that is opposed to the murder. Just let him be by himself. And it, I think it gave him that freedom mm -hmm. to totally. go no, with it. Yeah, totally. Completely, yeah. To the end of the Com line. Completely. I, I completely get it. So uh, obviously you must have shown the film when it was done to friends and family or done like a test screening. So I'm curious, what did you learn from those early screenings that impacted the finished film? And, and when did you see the film for the first time? <laughs> okay, the first time, okay, the first time that I saw it, we sat, we, we sat in an in a, in a, in a office. Of, he, he's working on a, a new TV show in Israel. And so we sat in this office in front of a, of a TV. And I saw the movie for two hours and I was shocked. I couldn't even say anything after two hours. We went to drink after after we saw after I saw the movie first uh, for the first time, and I just told them I I I have nothing I have nothing nothing to say. It's like it just like give me a, such a strong punch in my stomach, and it turns my emotions. Even though I was surprising to 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 see that that I didn't see myself as as an actor. I didn't see myself there, and I couldn't even accept that it's me, it wasn't me. So, and where I wanted to go with this. And so, yeah, yeah. continue. Yeah, so bit. just about this particular occasion, so at some point I decided to show to the actors, to the cast, lead ah. cast, the movie, and that's why, and I said it's not fair for Yuda to see it the first time, even with the other cast, because, you know, he's in every frame of the movie. And that's why we said, okay, I'm not gonna let you see it on a big screen before the rest of the cast, but you'll see it privately in a large TV set so that you know, so it's not your first time, you already mm -hmm. realize, you know, have a feel for the movie. So that's what happened, it was really, really shocking. And on the second screen, when yeah. Dahlia, when Dahlia oh, Robin wow, wow, was... Wow. Let me tell the story, okay, tell please, story. let me tell <laughs> that story. It. Please, Go for it. let me tell it. So, on that, so, so here's the first screening for, for the cast, which is always shocking for cast. They see themselves, and especially in this case, such controversial and hate, hated people and they represent them on screen it's it's a big deal so and at that event we decided that also the daughter of Itzhak Rabin Prime Minister Itzhak Rabin I mean the late Itzhak Rabin she'll also attend so she arrived with her daughter to see together with him so it's you have like uh, the actor who plays the assassin with the daughter the real daughter of Yitzhak Rabin really wild so there's this screening and we're sitting and it's tense and I don't know what's going to happen because if she comes against the movie you know it's not sure I know and it was the first time that I realized that what I did I mean that it's it's a story it's it's a real story and I just when she when they were there I realized that oh my god I'm playing the guy who killed her father and then I started to cry. And then I went outside, I ran outside when I couldn't see the last scene. And I went outside, I just started to cry. And I, I went to them 
And I cried and I said, I'm sorry, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. So, so, she, was. so the, fi- the, the movie ended and she was, you know, crying throughout the movie, of course. And then she said some nice superlative, yeah. you know, she really, really appreciated the movie. And then the second thing she did was to run looking for him and to hug him and thank him for being so authentic, you know, for portraying the assassin in such an authentic way. She actually, they hugged and cried, two of them which was so moving and also a closure yeah. for the process. Totally closure. Not closure because, you know, yet the world needs to okay. see the movie, but it was a closure for the production. Sure. But I do want to ask you, before you showed it to but I the cast... S- yeah, so I want to say something. Sure. So I had a couple of screenings which you have to do because they need to get feedback and also when, only when you watch it with audience, you realize certain things as a director. It's, you have to do it. So anyway, I showed it in the U.S. and I decided to make a screening to all my friends and friends of friends that are not Jewish and not Israeli. So they'll have nothing to do with the story on an emotional level. They're just going to watch a movie like a movie, which Mm -hmm. I cannot watch it that way. And the interesting part was, and especially it's New York City, so it's really international. And what we saw is that people were, thought that it's about their country. Like we had two Indian friends, they said, well, it's, it's about our country right now. This is what we are going through. And then the French talked about you know, how it is the tension, the religious tension and the nationalistic tension is exactly what they're going through this moment. And every person from every country, not to mention the, the New Yorkers that were talking about Donald Trump, of course, and you know the nationalistic uh, sentiments, incitement all over the place. And I think what the movie also shows, and it was very important to show, and that's what I realized how one-to-one it is during the research, is that you have a leader, he says something, that something translate into action of violence. He says, this guy is a traitor. The next thing you know, that traitor is being attacked physically, or in this case, being shot. And you see one-to-one how it works, and you can also see that in the US. You see Donald Trump coming out with like anti-immigration, da da da, and then you see Jews getting shot in a synagogue because they supported uh, immigrants. It's like one-to-one, it's so simple that it's, it's I, so hard, it, it, painful. It's painful. Painful to see. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, bring in my uh, p- politics yeah. to this interview. Yeah. But I will but just. Anyway, it, it, I, yeah. I'll just say F Trump, because <laughs> <laughs> I I need to. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have strong strong opposition yeah. to that man. Yeah. Um. So um. I'm 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 almost out of time, but I I have to ask you. Um. You're doing. It's been seven years since the late quartet, which I also thought was so well done. I'm so happy to hear you're doing something else right now. Uh, what can you tease people about this miniseries you're working on? Uh, it's a TV miniseries, eight episodes about the f- arguably the most traumatic war in Israel history called the Yom Kippur War, which happened in October 1973. I'm telling a story of the first three days, which were shocking because uh, Israel was attacked from Syria, the north and the south from Egypt, um, and was there was that danger of extinction extinction of being occupied and uh, these traumatic three days are what I'm telling through the eyes of you know a tank uh, unit uh, soldiers in in Hermon which is our north uh, the most northern northern part of Israel etc uh, etc et so it's it's a really war story well one of a tough so one. basic basically what he do, so Yaron came to Israel to do to touch the most fragile topics yes. in in this country and run away after right. that <laughs> not <laughs> run away but you know he's he's got the nerve to do that yeah listen I it takes balls of steel yeah. to, to touch this definitely I didn't it. want to say it but if you said it's, it, it no <laughs> it's, it's true <laughs> one of the things though is one of the things that why your film is so good is because it felt so authentic and when you're dealing with subject matter like those three days how much research had you been you've been doing and how much are you sort of making sure that everything you're portraying is like as realistic as it can be yeah Yeah, so this particular the new project uh is 10 years of research it's not research that i did it's the first time i'm directing a movie i did not write although by now i rewrote so much of it that i'm co-writer as well um but um i met i met the people it's ba- it's inspired by real people i met all of them i went on location to really go through the combat that they were taking part in spoke to people who were um you know th- that's their stories and when i got all that stuff i changed the script accordingly 
make sure that it's authentic. I'm bringing on set experts that were taking part of these uh, combats. So I'm trying to make it as authentic as I can. But, but at the end of the day, it's all about the approach with the actors, to be honest. It's also with, with this gentleman. It's, it's about you know, tuning to the essence of what happened there and being able to portray that that gives the feeling of authenticity. More than, although I, I'm very uh, pedantic about historical facts, at the same time, it's more about the essence of you know, the presence, like telling it in a true, true way, as opposed to mannerism, you know, acting, uh, you know, sort of large acting. It's more about taking all the guards down and, and just telling it like we yeah, speak now. Completely. Can I, what's the title? It's called Valley of Tears. Valley of Tears. Got it. Um, so when will it be on TV in Israel? Probably in six to nine months. Got it. Does it have a plan for an American release? Of course. I mean, not a plan, but it's uh, talks about it. taking it. To I'm looking forward to seeing it. Thank um, you very I much. I really mean it. You guys did a tremendous job with Thank this. Thank you very much. Very powerful film. Um, I hope it's a huge success for you guys, and thank you so much for coming in the studio. Thank you so thank much, you very Steve. Much for Great pleasure, Thank man. you. Mm -hmm.